All right, something I want to talk about today is how technology is creating and even exacerbating attachment issues. What today is referred to as attachment styles, so anxious attachment, fearful avoidant, and dismissive avoidant, would in many ways not have been possible 20, 30 years ago. I'll give you an example. I was recently in a relationship with a woman that I recognize is a fearful avoidant. And the relationship started very warmly, very positively. Both of us were engaging with one another in a positive way with no insecurities. We would text quite often. We would call each other quite often. We would make great attempts to see each other. Communication was great. At some point, she developed an insecurity that I was not as invested in the relationship as she is, that she was texting me first all the time or engaging with me first all the time. Now, the reality is I was texting her first just about as often as she was texting me first, but I still understood that it was just an insecurity that she developed and I wanted to hear her out and I wanted to let her express those feelings to me. Unfortunately, that conversation never happened. I offered the conversation twice. She was happy both times that I offered, but she never followed up on it. Instead, what she did for the next few weeks was post cryptic stories on her close friend's stories, try to get my attention by liking my reposts on TikTok, by engaging in a casual way with my Instagram stories and content, but she never made the move of seeking that conversation. So I could see that she was frustrated by me not chasing to have that conversation that she wanted to have. And so she started posting more and more provocative content, maybe DMs with other guys on her close friend's stories or, you know, one of those meme pages that just posts provocative content like you're healing, he's balding, whatever the hell, you know that kind of sassy content. So this made me want to engage even less with her and not want to respond at all to that kind of content. Eventually, I realized that she was using Instagram and TikTok and all these other platforms as a way to maintain some form of connection or provoke some form of engagement, but without ever making the vulnerable move of opening up about her feelings and about the insecurities that she had developed. As a fearful avoidant, she was so scared that I was going to reject her that what she wanted to do was bait me into chasing after her so that she could reject me, she could get over me. What I realized is that even if it did work and I did pursue this conversation and we had it and we went past it, she would always keep this kind of behavior on social media, use it as an indirect form of communication. Simply having access to the platform or giving her access to me via the platform was going to exacerbate her insecurities. 20, 30 years ago, before social media, this would have been a woman that at some point in a relationship developed an insecurity and maybe stopped calling. She would stop calling and then the man would call her and maybe she'd be a little bit more cold on the phone and it would be on the man to figure out what he did wrong to try to repair this relationship now. But it would be much more straightforward. You could have an actual conversation without ending up in this kind of stalemate of indirect conversation via stories and reposts and all of that. If you happen to live together, this would have been indirect communication, maybe passive comments that make you understand that there's something wrong, something to be talked over and fixed. But because everything now is done from a distance, from the comfortable distance of social media, we tend to use that as a medium for indirect communication. Another thing that social media does is it never puts a finality on relationships. So long as you have access to somebody via Instagram or any other kind of social platform, you feel like they're still a part of your life and you can always go back to them or always at some point reignite a connection. And it's simply it's not something that was possible 20, 30 years ago. When people were done, they were done. If somebody moved cities, you wouldn't know. If somebody changed numbers, you wouldn't know. If they happened to get married, you'd maybe only know if you heard about it from friends. Nowadays, with social media, we can stalk anyone, we can check on their page and always keep updated on their life and feel like there's still some hope somewhere. This also ruins relationships for those that have attachment issues because it never closes the door on other potential suitors and mates 
and never lets them focus on the one person that they're seeing fully. If you are in a relationship, there's no reason to have anybody on your Instagram, or whatever platform you use that you haven't met in real life, that isn't a friend of a friend, but it's just somebody that perhaps at some point added you from a dating app or that you met on the street and hit on you and you exchanged Instagrams. They're all just orbiters, I call them. People that orbit around you and your relationship and are ready to step in at any point and create havoc and chaos. Nowadays, social media complicates this, especially when you have hundreds and hundreds of followers and it's almost impossible to tell who else is preying on your relationship's downfall. So yeah, just a bit of food for thought.